Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's grab your swords, please. The sword of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, please. In verse 9. You know, one of the things that's happening in this transition that we're in, we are entering a new world. Things are going to become very different. It may take, things. some things will happen quickly, some things will take a, a little bit longer. But we're entering a, on a world where the body of Christ is going to stand in such restraint of the evil. How long that will be is up to the Lord. But evil will not be able to enter into the new realm that we're going into. They will be restrained. There's going to be a lot of restraining in what's going to be happening here shortly. Corporations that are wicked will be dismantled. Their assets will be turned over to the righteous. The wickedness can no longer enter until God allows them to. So we're entering a whole new area, a whole new way of life coming shortly. Technology will be advanced so much that it will take time to learn what's going to happen and what's happening. There'll be a process of training and learning what's going on because artificial intelligence will be under the control of the righteous. And, and in this transition that we're going into, there's going to be equipment that's going to be manufactured. In fact, they're manufacturing it now. That's going to bring healing to many bodies. They have high technology that's just been restrained from us. It's going to be released. We'll see different types of automobiles come out and all kinds of other things. But like I said, some of this will start quickly and some of this will go take longer. We will be entering what we call a quantum currency. And in this quantum currency, we'll have to learn how to adjust and utilize the AI technology to access, but it will be protected, it will be controlled by the righteous. In fact, the wicked will not have access to it. This is where many of these corporations that have been involved in uh, corruption will no longer have access. In fact, some of their a uh, a assets have been removed already. People don't know what's really happening. It's, you, you've got to investigate certain things and and, you know, that's one of the things the Lord has had my wife and myself do most of our born-again life is investigate things and, and become watchers in areas so that we can stay updated with what God is doing. And in that, there's something that we call prophetic insight. Everyone say prophetic insight. And for us to advance into what's getting ready to happen, we need to have prophetic insight. And that means that there's got to be a leading of the Spirit and the voice of the Spirit of God has got to be very sensitive. And that's what he's training us through. That's why we're going through the burn. Does everybody understand? That's why we're going through the burn. So anything that's interfering can be burned out so that we can have a clear understanding. You know, sometimes we have dreams and visions and things to that degree, but people don't know what they mean. So in this, this is where God wants to bring us to a place where we have prophetic insight. We interpret what the dream is. Does everybody get it? And then we confirm what it is. So in this, prophetic insight is so essential now. And it's going to take a learning process. It's going to take a dying process. It allows us to see the things that are getting, that are coming or Preparing us for the things to come. 
In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9, would you read it with me? As it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Well, you know what? That's going to take prophetic insight to get it. But God has revealed them to us through his what? His spirit. For the spirit searches not some things, all things. Yes, the deep things of God. So if you want to flow with the spirit of God, he's going to take you deeper. You're going to need to have prophetic insight. The only thing that prevents people from going to that place is self. You know, when we were gathering together uh, and tonight, and, 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 and the Lord said to me, the few. See, there are those who are <laughs> call, they're the chosen, and then there's the called chosen, and there's the few. There's a, no, there's, there's, there's a few. There's not enough. There's not many. And that's what he's trying to get it to where from the few to many that have prophetic insight. But the only thing that prevents us from getting there is ourself and sowing in the flesh. That will prevent every kind of prophetic insight. God won't release that. You sow in the flesh, you reap corruption. The enemy always prevents you from growing. That's why we want to respond and not what? React. Because that's, what, that's what's going all over the world right now. The enemy's getting people to react. There's an atmosphere of irritation all over the world. Darkness has come up on the earth more than what we've ever seen before. And that's because things are being exposed more and more. So if you're a reactor, you will never reach it until you get dominion over that and you become a responder instead of a reactor. Does everybody get it? And that's what we need so badly right now is prophetic insight. That is the ability to see spiritually. Hallelujah. Verse 11, let's go. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are what? Spiritually what? Discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. In other words, he who has spiritual insight, prophetic insight. For who, know, who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Things that God has prepared for his people is released prophetically by the Holy Spirit. What is it in his, it's always coming in his divine ways to promote his divine order so that we hear, we see what he hears and what he wants us to hear and we see what he wants us to see. Again, I've shared this over and over and over. A greatest desire of a parent is that their children see what they see. Why? So they don't get fall into traps. Amen. In this, what God is doing is creating a window into the timeless realm by his establishing the prophetic insight to those willing to learn and to yield. It's going to take a willing to learn and yield to these things. Prophetic sight is supported by spiritual discernment. It is the ability to make right choices. It's the ability to distinguish things that please God and things that displease God. And it's the ability to separate the things of God and his time. Remember, the enemy's always out to distract, mislead. 
in this prophetic insight, God will always expose the enemy's deceptions and his strategies. You will always be a step ahead of him. Amen? Especially in the present time. <laughs> Praise God. Go to Proverbs 2. Verse 1, let's speak it. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, that's going to take discipline. If you cry out for what? Discernment. And lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her, as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear and reverence of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of, the ju of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good thing. When? When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul and discretion will preserve you and understanding will do what? Keep you. From what? To deliver you from the way of evil, from men who speak perverse things and from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness. Wisdom. Wisdom does what? Tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. <laughs> Wisdom and understanding equal discernment. <laughs> Hallelujah. Wisdom in the area of what to do, what you see. Spiritual sight is so important, so spiritual insight is vital. See, you may see something, but how do you see it? That's where interpretation comes, and that's where you and I must distinguish what is going on there. And as with through prophetic insight, again, this will take practice. Anyways, it's taking practice by the leading of the Spirit and the communication of the Spirit's signs. He speaks to us also many times in symbols. You will sense something. I mean, there's some strange things that happen. You'd think I was nuts if I cheered with him, so I'm not going <laughs> to. But there are certain things that I know that I know that I'm in God's perfect place. <laughs> I know it when I'm in God's perfect time. Even when I'm somewhere. When we went away this weekend, everything happened that God let me know I was supposed to be there. It was perfect. <laughs> and of course, then he gave me this message while I was there. So, <laughs> hallelujah. First John chapter 4. You know, and the reason why I'm sharing the area of reacting instead of responding, because then people take, it takes more time to come out of the sowing in the flesh. Does it, I mean, because remember, when you sow in the flesh, you reap corruption, so it builds, it's a bank. It's a bank of the flesh. And that bank has to be emptied. So if you're an individual that reacts every two weeks, your bank is always empty. You're spending more time emptying the bank than you are prophetically in sight. Amen? Did I, anybody here understand that? He's got <laughs> Hallelujah. First John chapter 4, verse 1. Let's speak it. Beloved, do not believe every voice, every spirit, but test the spirits or the voices, whether they are of God or not. Why? Because there's many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. 
Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in this flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because what? He is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know that the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Amen. We got to test the voices. We test the presence. Not only do we test the fruit. Amen. In other words, when you test something, you investigate it. Does everybody get it? You investigate it. And that, again, that great deception that's been all over the world is people are taken captive into this COVID lies and all of this other stuff that's going on. Why? Because they really never investigated. They just listened to the Antichrist false prophets on the media and they accepted what they said and they went and got, and got even stupider. Because they really never investigated what was the outcome of these things or never waited because fear caused them to do these things. And again, they call themselves Christians, but yet fear controlled them. Amen? Does everybody understand? So if anyone's listening, you've been repent, break the curse off, and you'll be cleaned. Hallelujah. And don't go get boosted on either, you know. Sheesh kebab. Hallelujah. Okay, why? Because there's many liars and deceivers, false witnesses in the world. Amen? They've, uh, they've infiltrated in all areas, and they've infiltrated the body of Christ. Remember, the Lord said many impostors have come. Paul wrote down many, uh, 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 many have come in stealth, uh, undercover, you know? Hallelujah. And um, they've come to infiltrate the body of Christ. And take advantage and begin to dull their senses. <laughs> you know, even your senses are part of prophetic insight. Not your physical senses, your spiritual senses. And that's where you judge by the fruit and certain other things. You judge the voices, you, ju you judge the presence, you judge what's influencing you. So that <clears throat> when, when something's going on, you're not reacting, you're responding. You know your whole environment, everything around you. When you have, when, when you have spiritual insight and discernment, you know what's going around you. In fact, the Holy Spirit will tell you things to come. He doesn't mean that he even uh, releases and unveils the whole plan of God for you. No. He wants you to walk and trust in him. That's where he says, don't lean on your own understanding. Amen. That's where we need prophetic insight so we're leaning on his understanding. Go to Hebrews 1. One of the things that um, prophetic insight assists us in and that is exposing the true reality. When you're, when there's prophetic, he's always revealing the true reality. Uh, the, the, the false reality begins to dismantle like a puzzle. And the true reality becomes and replaces it. You begin to see things that are different. Um, gosh, I, sometimes it's hard to put this stuff in words when you, you know, you can only experience it. But it's like a puzzle that goes apart, and then that's, that's the false reality, and then the true reality comes. But behind the true reality and the prophetic insight, you always see Jesus in some area. The Lord is always releasing something to where it's confirming who he is and, and assisting us in the area of getting there. Amen? You know, that's why, you know, 
the word says that we're to walk in peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. Well, when you lose any one of those, especially peace or joy, when you lose peace and joy, you're losing righteousness too, you know. If somebody comes and steals your peace, you allow it to happen. Hello? Don't blame somebody else for stealing your peace. You let it go. Amen? That peace, joy, and righteousness is an atmosphere around you and in you and through you. And that will always give you a place of yielding to prophetic insight. You become more sensitive. In fact, you know things are going to happen before they happen. And you don't even know what's getting ready to happen. But you know something's going to happen. And that's when the Spirit is saying, look at, look, look. Be prepared. Investigate. Hallelujah. Hebrews 1.1, 1, 1, let's speak it. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir over all things, through whom also he made the worlds. And being the brightness of his glory and express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels as he is by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. You know, remember there were the prophets that spoke Amen. Then Jesus came. He spoke. Then the Holy Spirit spoke prophetically. And now he's speaking prophetic insight through his body, through his children, his people right now. That's why the word tells us that before, before God does anything, <clears throat> he speaks through his prophets. That's why prophets are rising up all over the place. But then there are false prophets also rising up. But if you have prophetic insight, you can discern which one is of God or not. I knew immediately when Obama showed up, he was an antichrist. People couldn't see it. They didn't have prophetic insight. They were only looking at, oh, we've got a first black president. Well, it's got nothing to do with color. It's about fruits. Amen. I don't care if the person was Spanish purple, green, or whatever. It's their fruit, but you can sense in the spirit with prophetic insight. Does everybody understand it? That that man was wicked and still is. He's an antichrist. Not the antichrist, but one of many of them. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Glory to God. Go to Exodus 3. And if you're a Christian, you don't care about race, color. You don't care about any of those things. It's irrelevant. What you're looking for is fruit. Righteous, justice, fruit. But when people mock the Bible and all kinds of other things, you know they ain't right. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 1. Prophetic insight Everybody there? Let's speak it. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midon, Median, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mount of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he did what? He looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now go in what? Turn aside in what? See, what was he doing? He was investigating. Now watch that. When he began to choose to investigate, look what happens. And I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he began an investigation, hello? <laughs> So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God did what? Called to him. Hmm. From the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Again, 
Moses decided to go investigate. When the Lord saw Moses begin to investigate, he called to him. He contacted him. Does everybody get this? He called to him. And God was revealed to Moses by prophetic sight, insight. Genesis 3. Starting at verse 1. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Now the spirit was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Of course, the serpent said to the woman, you shall not surely die. So he called God a liar. Amen. For God knows in a day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and that was the big lie. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when women saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant for the eyes, tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband and with her, and he ate. And the eyes of both of them were what? Open, but they were actually what? Closed. And they knew that they were naked and sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Oh, hallelujah. The serpent released words of deceptive influence that created a desire to rebel against the command of God. Does everybody understand that? The power of words were of agreement. She agreed with what he was saying. Instead of her investigating, she agreed right away. And a desire to rebel against the command of God causing the loss of spiritual sight and senses and even physical sight. Because many people are spiritually blinded and then there's physical blindness. So many people can't, in other words, we needed, God brought us to see again. That's why he came. He said, I wanted to give my people sight. That's why not everyone in the Old Testament had spiritual sight. Only, the, only when the Spirit of the Lord came upon the prophets. Amen? But now you and I have the Holy Spirit who brings spiritual insight to anyone willing to yield and learn and get out of the flesh. Hallelujah. In Matthew 6, Let's speak it, Matthew 6, verse 22. The lamp of the body is the what? Is the what? The eye. So how you see things is you determine how clean you are or how dark you are, how dirty you are. Amen? The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of what? Light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of what? Darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Wow. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will put on, is it not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Hallelujah. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, man. There's God. The sort of lamp of the body is the eye. Also, I want to share something about the eye. When he speaks about the eye, it's also known as the imagination. Because imagination is the canvas of spiritual insight. I'm going to say it again. 
The imagination is the canvas of a spiritual insight. It's what God paints the picture so you can see more. I mean, every one of us has heard a picture is worth a thousand words. Amen. That old saying. So that's important. That's why sometimes God will just give a glimpse of something. A vision, a dream, or whatever. And with spiritual insight, you'll be able to determine what he's trying to speak to you. And you can always confirm it with someone. So in this, your imagination. So if your imagination is dark, you're not going to be able to. It's going to be contaminated. That's associated with contamination. That's why pornography is a destroyer of, of pure man, um, imagination. So where do you get it? And then when, especially addiction, the only thing you, you're always seeing is how can you get high? How about unforgiveness? See, these things are planted pictures in your imagination. And when somebody's name come up or whatever, that comes right up in front. But this is where you've got to have the discernment to refuse, reject, and sever those things. And sever the emotional attachments with them. But many people fall in the area because the light that is in them has now become dark. It's been contaminated. Amen? And that's when a person becomes a reactor instead of a responder. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. So the lamp of the body is the eye or the imagination. The, the eye, if the eye is corrupt, of course, in the... The body will be, the, you, you'll be darkness. Your imagination will be corrupted. Ephesians 4, 20. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you do what? Put off concerning the former conduct, the old man, which grows corrupt, according to what? Deceitful lusts. And be renewed in the spirit of your thoughts or your mind. And that you put on the what? New man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and what? And holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and don't sin. In other words, be angry but don't react. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? Devil. Let him who, st who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor working with his hands. What is good that he may have something to give to someone who is in need, and let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but which is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers, and don't grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God and Christ forgave you. Okay. Here in this he's saying we, we've got to renew and refresh divine thoughts in us all the time. Divine phrases, you know, that we hold. You know, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and so forth. We have these little simple things. I'm more than a conqueror. You know, instead of reading the whole chapter, you know, you've got certain phrases that you can release very quickly. Because when we renew and refresh the divine thoughts, phrases, and promises, we define our own, our reality. It begins to break you loose from the false reality that the world is always impressing. And now you begin to find the true reality and what we're to be living in. Remember, because you're changing your environment by your words. And when you change your environment by your words, because what you speak is what you eat. If you speak more light, you eat more light. Amen? That means your sight will be better. You'll have more prophetic insight. You have more prophetic insight and discernment. 
That's why you begin to change. You know, some people have a hard time at first because they're like, well, man, you want me to just speak these prayers seven times a day? I could tell them just eat the book, but it ain't going to work. You got to speak it to eat it. Amen? But after about two weeks, they're like, you know, something's happening to me. Yes, you're eating light. Praise God. <laughs> There's no calories in light, you know. You want a real keto diet? Speak the word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So again, we want to stay renewed and refreshed with divine thoughts and phrases and promises that are from our Lord because it will divine our, our reality. <clears throat> to renew is an area to where you train your thoughts to respond to your spiritual surroundings. So you're renewing so that your thoughts are being trained. Again, it takes practice, doesn't it? As the ability to see physically takes light, so the ability to see spiritually takes light. Amen? <clears throat> this light that comes is called revelation. It's called what? Revelation. That's why the Bible says when... Uh, because of lack of revelation, the restraints of the flesh are weakened. Amen? So people will react more because of the lack of revelation. Does everybody get it? you got to remember something. Re revelation is associated with relation with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The realm you're more sensitive to will determine the realm you live in. Does everybody get it? If you're more sensitive and more concerned about the physical and how you feel and all the other stuff, you're going to live in that realm. Woe is me. Nice realm. Make sure you're six feet away from me. I don't want anything to do with your realm. <laughs> contamination <laughs> oh didn't they do that with the bug or whatever yeah the realm you're more sensitive to will determine the realm you live in the spiritual mind must be renewed daily amen daily go to jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 11 and 12 If the Lord says to you, what do you see? That means he's placed something there for you to see. Does everybody get it? He's not telling you, okay, go find something to see. If he says to you, what do you see? That means there's something there he wants you to see. Now look what happens with Jeremiah in verse 11. The more, moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, you have seen what? Well, for I am ready to perform my word. Now, don't you want to know that you saw according to what God wanted you to see? Man, you want to hear him say, you see well. You've seen well what I've showed you. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. In other words, unless you can't, if you miss what he's trying to show you, he can't perform his word. Because he's trying to get something to us. Does everybody understand that? He's trying to get something to us. And he's saying, what do you see? Now, we all know what God's word is by his stripes for healed and so forth. Amen. Again, the night that he healed me after I was supposed to be not be able to walk for three months from a football injury on a Sunday, and I was at Tuesday night. And I had a vision. I saw the Lord. In other words, what do you see? Look. And I saw him on a boat. He was on the edge of the boat looking towards me. So I must have, for me, it was like I must have been in the water. 
But I wasn't in water. I was on top of it. And he said, walk. I put my foot down and almost screamed out. Ah, that was, I wasn't healed. I said, and I'm like, and he said to me, now, ask me to command you to walk. I said, okay, Lord, command me to walk. He said, walk. And I walked. I ran. And I was totally healed. But again, it started with, what do you see? Then he performed his word. Does everybody understand that? It was just like investigate. Amen? When the Lord spoke, called, Mo when Moses saw what was what? That happened the same thing. When I saw the Lord, I, there was an investigation there. And he told me to do something. I obeyed it, but it didn't heal me. But then he wanted me to go further. He asked me to ask him. Now think about this. He asked me to ask him to command my healing. And he said, I command your healing. He performed his word and I was healed. My wife was very happy. She wouldn't have to take care of me for two months or three months. <laughs> <laughs> and we just had, I think the baby was, anyways, Junior came around, and uh, <laughs> so she'd have been, I'd have been, she'd have been taking care of her herself. So you, you have seen well, that's a beautiful thing we want to hear. When eyes or imagination entertain darkness, your perception of revelation knowledge will stop. It will what? Stop. When your imagination or your eyes begin to entertain uh, deception or darkness, your perception of revelation knowledge will cease. Remember, revelation knowledge is what keeps the restraints on us. When eyes or imagination entertain good things and healthy things, your ability to navigate the realm of the Spirit becomes more clearer. You'll be able to navigate. In other words, you'll be able to have prophetic insight. In other words, you'll never have a sense of lost. Does everybody understand that? You, you won't ever have, even if you don't know where you're going. <laughs> and you don't have Google, you have the Holy Spirit, amen? You'll never have a sense of being lost. And you'll know that when you're in place and out of place. Sometimes there's an area where you know you're just not in place. In other words, you need a tune-up. You're not in tune. Amen? Hallelujah. Everybody okay? I'll go to 1 Thessalonians 4. In verse 1, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1, let's speak it. Finally then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ that you should obtain, abound more and more, just as you receive from us, how you ought to what? Walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus Christ. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, your separation that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no one should take advantage or defraud his brother in this matter, because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness, therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has given us his Holy Spirit. Sanctification is the divine command from God. So his light can shine through us and our members and our gates. As a prophetic people, we should always have prophetic insight. Hebrews 10, in verse 19.
Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the what? Holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our own hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Hallelujah. In other words, that is sanctification. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he whose promise is faithful, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking to assemble ourselves together as it is the manner of many, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. A new living way is established by sanctification and consecration, and of course separation unto God. From what? Corruptible things of influence. From corruptible things of influence. In Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9, Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good of, of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, focus on these things or meditate. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and a God of peace will be what? With you. Praise God. <clears throat> In other words, focus on these things. Truth, honorable. Things that are just, things that are pure, good report. Think about these things. Focus on these. Try not to get so involved in corruptible things. Gossip and slander and all the other garbage. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16. I say, then walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you're not under the law. You're not uh, for the flesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, Uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revelries, and the like, which I told you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, hallelujah. Walking in the Spirit is walking in the light. Walking in the Spirit is walking in the light of the Spirit world. We become, I'm going to use a word, photosensitive. We become what? Photosensitive. That's spiritual insight. We are photosensitive. Why? Because we're sensitive to the things that we see. We are photosensitive to the spiritual things. We are now engaged in a new perception of this new reality that is and that is to unfold. Prophetic insight. Prophetic insight. I'll say that again. We are, when you're walking in the spirit, you're walking in the light of the spirit world. You are photosensitive to the spiritual things. You are now engaged in a new perception of the new reality that is and is to be, that it is to unfold. <clears throat> John chapter 3. We are what? Photosensitive. That doesn't mean that uh, you're doing selfies. Hello? <laughs> you're not a selfie. 
cracks me up, man. Some people just can't get their eyes off themselves. I'm at the gym, people are selfie, and I just want to puke. <laughs> it's like ridiculous. Anyways, John 3. <laughs> it's the ones you got to watch is while they're taking selfies of themselves when they're driving. Yeah, that's when you get out of the, you get out of, off that road right away. <clears throat> John 3.18. Let's speak it. He who believes in him is not condemned. Is everybody there? But he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were what? Evil. You know, you think about this. And it just kind of, can you imagine the moment that Adam and Eve lost their sight? I mean, they talked to God face to face. They saw the angels and everything just went. Everything was gone. And they, they were afraid. And they ran and they hid themselves. And so the Lord said, where are you at, Adam? Like he didn't know. Because it says they heard the, cool in the cool of the day the Lord walking they heard him because they couldn't see him they lost all spiritual sight and you and I were born that way but God is restoring that spiritual sight and spiritual insight prophetic insight now that's so needed by the Holy Spirit and he's awakening people to the spiritual and prophetic insight in other words, it's time to grow. It's trying to go deeper. Amen? No selfies. Photosensitive. Verse 20. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be what? Exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. And I'm going to close at Philippians 2 and verse 12. Therefore, my beloved, as you've always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So we have no excuse. There's something, his spirit all, already in us is saying, look it, I want you to please God. Amen? And then he gives us an example. Do all things without what? Complaining and disputing that you may become blameless and harmless children of God. Without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. Well, you, if you're going to shine as a light, you're going to have to have prophetic insight. Holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, and that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Shine as lights of the world, prophetic people with a prophetic insight. Amen. Yield to the Spirit of God. Learn. It will take practice. You'll be unctioned to be in all of a sudden you'll be seeing things different. You want to be able to come to that place where you know your environment. Always. Amen? You always want to know your environment. What's around me? What do you sense? What do you see? Spiritually. Prophetic insight. You know, there's a simple thing. Holy Spirit, what do you want to show me? What do you want to show me, Holy Spirit? Amen? Always ask Him. Don't let me miss it. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Father, we thank you for a word we're honored and blessed and what you're bringing us into, into this new world that you're, entering, you're bringing us to with righteousness and justice. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would not only give us the wisdom, understanding, and discernment, but the prophetic insight so we can yield to the Holy Spirit so that we can see those things that you want us to see with understanding and discernment and interpretation for your glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen.